Hello and welcome to Bong Table. I'm Mass and this is my Adepticon Battle Report. I'm just going to go over all my experiences and games at Adepticon. Um, I took a bunch of photos of each of the games. They're not all the way like turn one through wherever it ended. It's just kind of how I played. I was kind of like playing it, taking photos, and I just ended up being like, ah, I gotta play these games. I don't need to like build a battle report each time. So I'm just gonna go over all of them. First things first, I'm just gonna, you know, talk about my, my trip and everything. So I took Skillin with me, him and I drove down to Chicago from Winnipeg. Um, the trip was pretty good actually until about six o'clock where I then got a migraine and I couldn't see out of half my vision. So, but Skillin took over. He drove the rest of the way. We got to the hotel. I made an Expedia uh, reservation, except the hotel had changed names from a Days Inn to a Best Western. And our reservation bounced, so I had to pay again. But we got our rooms, and we were all good. Like, room was really nice and everything. Nothing too bad to say about that. The Continental bread Breakfast was not the greatest. There wasn't really any coffee, wasn't really any, you know, food. So it was kind of like we ended up just skipping that most days and just went to, like, Dunkin' Donuts. What's... From a Canadian who has Tim Hortons, Dunkin' Donuts is basically just Tim Hortons, but for America. It was it was pretty obvious once we got there. Thursday, so we drove Wednesday. Thursday, we kind of ran around the hall, looked at everything, got there early. Um, we met Meloninja, super great guy, super nice. Um, probably like the friendliest guy there like if you ever meet him in in real life what like we did super nice guy like he was great to hang out with and just be around um uh skillin and him got a games in mel ninja was playing a previous version of my old horse list skillin who has played on an en endless amount of games into that horse list uh knows exactly what he's doing and their little pickup game uh skillin won uh while that was going on uh, what is it? Uh, Brian and Carl showed up. We all said hi. Um, also, like, we met um, Stravros and Daryl and Yanis at the Parabellum booth. Now, the first day I should have bought stuff because I, <laughs> by the end of this, I realized I'm going to go into Dwight home after uh, playing all these horse games because I'm just like, I am done, of horse. I need to step away from this. Um, to the point where I'm like, okay. Uh, I should have picked up a couple things at the Parabellum booth because when I went there on Sunday to pick up some stuff that I needed, there was nothing left. And I'm like, man, they just went through this entire booth to grab it, everything. So that kind of sucked, but also it's like really good on Parabellum because, you know, their product selling. People like their game. Um, it was, you know, it was also really nice being like Daryl and Stravos. They're really sweet guys, really nice. Stravos, like, if you can get him talking about the lore, he'll talk. He'll talk forever about the lore, and it's great. Um... Some of, like, dude, dude's got, like, plans within plans within plans for his lore. And there was uh, spoilers for his RPG book, what Leandros is super excited about because it keeps Stravos away from the rules of the game. <laughs> so it lets Leandros develop while Stravos has his whole lore he can write for it all. Which is really nice. And it was really funny because we saw, like, big prop versions of the RPG book. And I went to pick one up to, like, open up. And it's just like, no, this is this is fake. <laughs> this is just a punk of cardboard. So, he tricked me there. Um, yeah, so while uh, Mel Ninja and Skillin were getting a game in, Brian and Carl showed up. Um, I met the Michigan crew. There's, like, Steve. There's Matthew. I'll probably have some photos in here, like, post-editing mass. We'll handle that. So you can get an idea who these people are. And they played a game and they played uh, Spires into Dwight Home, and it was kind of like, oh, what's going on? Um, Leandros flew back that day um, and just got back and he's like eating food and he's talking to people, watching like people play pickup games. Um, so I talked to him for a bit. It's really nice to always see Leandros. Um, he's always like super nice and just like understanding of a lot of things. And he's just like, he's always open to listen, what's really nice. Um, it's also really funny watching him try to like, <laughs> like try and get words in while he's trying to eat because he's really hungry. But he's a super cool dude. Uh, so yeah, that was kind of was it travel day, first day there. Um, I don't know things I bought. There was like a cat RPG with like cat minis. I bought that because I saw a fat cat and I was like, man, I want the fat cat. Um, there was like a 
Chaos Lord on Juggernaut. I bought that out of like the bits bin. It was like 20 bucks. I'm like, oh sweet, I'll put this up on my shelf. What else did I buy? Oh, I bought some Parabellum stuff. I bought like two mini Rajas. Yeah, Rajas? Yeah, they're Rajas. Cause I want to like put them on a monster base and then I have the Mahut with the Maja Raja like sorcerer. Cause it's just, the mini Rajas are literally a guy riding an elephant. <laughs> so it's pretty good there. Um, also, I picked up a 100K shirt. I like, I gotta, I gotta come from the house of representing. So got my shirt, it's really good. Um, and that was, you know, the first two days. So next day we get up, we head out, we get there bright and early. Um, I brought a pallet of beer for everyone. So there's like this, just this big thing of beer and I just hit it under one of the tables. I literally just walked into the convention and just put it underneath one of the tables. Uh, we met uh, Judge Rolo, who's kind of, you know, being the head judge of the whole event. And he is Leandros. We, you know, scan in all our papers, show our lists, get all our stuff. And we go over like what the train is and all that. And like, you know, if there's anything wrong, call over the judge and uh, we get into our first games. So here's my first game. I am playing a city states player who, who is playing like double hoplite blocks some solenoid, um, the shooty satyrs and the ambush satyrs. He is playing Ah, uh, what else has he got there? He's got some Minotaurs in there. I think he's got some Hepestians and some Thyrians. And I think he's got uh, the Trident Giant. I'm playing Horse Lord. You've seen the list a million times. If you've watched any of my other Bow reports. I might just like flash it up on screen really quick. Um, like post editing here. Just be like, doo -doo -doo -doo. there we go. Even add sound effects. Um, so far, like I believe this is turn one. He's got his um, shooty boy satyrs right over there, sitting in the train. We're playing Foresight. I don't like Foresight because you just gotta like mark one of these zones randomly um, as like which ones you turn off if you both pick the same one. It counts as double. It's um, it's really annoying because like I'm playing, I'm playing my list, I'm playing the scenario, I'm playing the table, I'm playing my opponent's list. I don't need to think about some weird mini game that happens after we roll for supremacy. Um, I forgot about it a lot of times my opponent had to kindly remind me of it because I was just like, oh, I'm just gonna play the game. But um, first off, you know, I'm just running my mount squires at the table, taking up some board space, kind of push them back as I like, wait for the rest of the horses to show up. That is turn, I don't know, probably one or two. Here's turn, oh, probably like three. Um, you can already see like I'm going for scenario over here. My opponent is pretty far back. Like his double hop block isn't really getting up the table. Um, I'm kind of just like hanging out, waiting for more of the horses to show up. He goes over here to score this one. And we kind of just like score a couple points. Nothing too crazy. We're still setting up because I'm really waiting for my Ash and Dawn to appear so I can get a lot of my work done. Here we go. Uh, first unit of Ash and Dawn is on the table. So now we can start getting some work done. Um, Weird things going on. I'm trying to bait like this side charge here so that his hoplites can come in. My Ashenon can just crush him from the flank. Nothing too crazy. The melee satyrs on the right here are coming up for my Mountain Noble Lord and Helso Knights. They're going to get him. It's going to be really sucky, but I'm not super worried. Um, there's a couple plans there to just like shoot these guys out super far and just like run away and just be like, oh, whatever. Um, Scoring still being done. Like my opponent has two zones. I have two zones. Nothing crazy. We're kind of holding off. Um, there's this fight right here between uh, what is it? Companion cab and sealed temple. I'm not super like. Oh no, the sealed temple. I'm more like. Man, these companion cab are gonna die. <laughs> I'm just, they're just gonna get charged and killed. Not like they don't have any defense. They're gonna rip, get rip, right ripped up. So I'm not exactly sure what turn this is. Probably like three or four. Yeah, probably three. But overall, you know, we can kind of kind of setting up going places. Uh, I believe this is about the end of the game. So things would happen. Um, his melee satyrs killed my Hellsel Knights. I deployed another unit of Ash and Dawn who basically just went and swept the entire table on this side. Killed his Minotaur Hespians, killed his satyrs, and then just went and scored two zones at the same time because you can do that. Da -da -da, really good. Um, my other uh, Ash and Dawn went through his Thyrians and his one unit of Hopolites and just ended up over here. These, uh, what is it? I, 
I lost you in a Hellsome Knights or something. I think I got them in the way of the Thyrians and they died at some point. Um, I deployed my second unit of Sealed Temple over here and his giant killed them. whoop de doo uh, I believe, I didn't take a photo of the last game, but I'm pretty sure his, I know his Hoplites here basically ran off and just redeployed to not get charged in the flank by Ash and Dawn. Um, and I run my Mounted Squires like here so that if he wants to charge Mounted Squires with his Hoplites or his Giant, he has to come off the zone. And I think he does it with his Giant, what's not a good play. Um, we have Judge, I'm going to do him in purple. You have to, uh, pardon me, I have a little bit of a, I'm still a bit, I, I have some con crud as it's called, so I'm, uh, I would have recorded this way earlier, except I'm just, just completely out and sick. So there's Judge Rolo's hands, he's actually checking, um, this interaction, if you can score both zones, you can. Opponent called him over, that's a-okay, nothing to worry about there, and that's kind of my key to victory. So, with that... Um, I outscore my opponent and I win because I just choose one of his two zones to lock down. He's not going to be coming any closer. I have two zones that I outpace him and win. So round one goes to Horse Lord. Let's go to round two. Here's round two. I'm playing an old Dominion player. He's running like double Bone Golems, double Busset Floy. Uh, I believe two or three units of Legionnaires. He's got an Archimandrite and a Hierodeacon. He's also got a uh, Strategos in a big, uh, uh, was it, Praetorium block. And four stands of Curies, who's he's trying to basically blow everyone up with Insanity. Uh, Insanity is a really good spell, and I need to deal with it. So I'm, I don't play this very well, and I should have held off better. Uh, I didn't get a practice game into New Old Dominion, so I wasn't really sure how fast they're coming in. That plus one reinforcement roll makes sure that Old Dominion basically comes onto the table as a big horde because they're getting so many successes. They're not like speed fast, they're just a ton of stuff is coming in with that plus one roll. And it's like, Jesus. Um, I believe, I don't believe this is grinding them down. I, this might be grinding them down. I, I know like you gotta pick one of these scenario zones and if you pick it and you don't, you're not controlling it, um, at the start of the turn you can get in there and you can score like three po more points. So, there's there's a strategy where you I'm gonna explain it now and I should have done it but I failed to where you hold one side of the table let's back that up so let's say you hold this side of the table yeah there we go you basically score this zone and the next turn you score the other zone you basically shimmy your guys back and forth scoring four points back and forth instead of the one um, it's kind of the way to do it is to control that. And then you also want to control uh, this. So, being scared of the Curies, I just run my Mountain Squires up. I sh I only got one at the start. He, I think he's like still placing his minis. I'm not exactly sure what this photo is, but yeah, we're well. It'll look better in the next couple photos. Let's go look at those. Here we go. Looks much better. Um. I'm kind of skirting the line of his 16, like I'm sitting at 16.1 and I really should have just ran and uh, march charge both Mountain Squires into the Curies because he would have been only able to kill one and the other Mountain Squire unit can just like rip through them. That's really fine. Um, that would have been really good for me and it would have also pushed back his Archimandrite legionary unit back a bit and keep them away so I could have got got some good work out of them um what is it also night seal temple scoring zones doing good my opponent's just taking up the middle here that's a-okay because I'm totally planning to drop Ash and Dawn right in the middle so far the first couple turns doing okay let's go on to, I think the turn three on this one there we go um really pushing up with these household knights He's kind of getting stuck on himself over here. I'm looking to take that zone and kill the Hero Deacon, what's in this unit. Um, hopefully bringing on more Hustle Knights and Seal Temple on this side of the table to help out. Uh, bringing some Ash and Dawn elsewhere. Ash and Dawn are just like running up the table, looking to get into his stuff. Um, he's currently just insan in insanity killing like... Mountain Squires and such, and I I should have just, like, dropped both of them onto the Curies before. 
I didn't. Now he has Bone Golems on that side, so it's going to be really shitty for me. So, not doing too great. I think he's outscoring me with points right now. Yeah, because he's just touching one, two, three to my two. Not doing great, but might be able to take this back. Going to have to deal with his four heavies, which is the really annoying part. Uh, here we go. So, I'm already starting to get the Seal Temple, like, in here. Get some work done. Uh, he... Marched up his uh, Praetorians and charged my Ashendon. Ashendon did a ton of work but didn't kill them because they're defense 5. Um, over here I'm looking to get the other horses in to start killing off these Legionnaires. And Seal Temple can get in here and Hellsel Knights. You know, like wipe out this right side and actually work on that plan of scoring 4 points here then 4 points here. And if I can keep the rest of this table um, occupied, I'll be in a really good spot. But uh, Curie's down, lost a stand. Um, it's, it's really brutal. <laughs> I'll be really honest. This is a really brutal fight, but let's find out what goes on next. Um, here we go. So things, other things happen. Um, my Ash and Dawn kill off his Praetorians. My Ash and Dawn get into his, uh, Bruce Eloy's flank. So I'm starting to rip through that. Uh, two units of Legionaries on the right are dead. He's got one bold, like, bone golem left right here. Um, he's engaged with both my regiments, and I'm trying to kill it off so I can start the scoring engine. Um, I think it's down to, like, three health, and if I, like, got it, I would have been in a very good place to win this game, but, uh, that Bone Golem holds on a little longer than I really want it to. Um, my second unit of Ashendon, uh, Seal Temple died or something, I totally forget what they died to, but, uh, second unit of Ashendon killed his Bone Golems and then went for the Curies to get rid of them, except Curies just blew them up, I rolled a bunch of sixes on Resolve and lost a bunch of guys, and I just end up just getting sanity to death. Even with the Resolve 5, it's still really brutal. Because he's in tier 3 at this point, so he's doing like 4 extra wounds per 6, and you roll like 4, four sixes, and you're just, you're just watching guys explode. This is about the end of the game, so you can see here where I'm trying to score uh, both these zones. I should have like side shuffled. Like, oh, I'd get four points here, then, oh, I'd get four points there, and done that would have, like, I think actually just tilted me enough to win. Um, this fight's just going at this point. It's really brutal. I'm trying to get the Hellsel Knights to come over and help. Um, if I was smarter, I would have actually gone for these uh, Legionaries and the Archimandrite and killed them because they're scoring units and just left the Curies to, like, insanity people. I was not, <laughs> and that's another mistake on my end, but my opponent does end up scoring, I believe, these three scenario elements at one point, scoring a ton of points and beating me by one point. So overall, second round was a loss by one point. Uh, needed, a, needed a practice game or two into New Old Dominion, didn't get it before I showed up, kind of sucked, but... Uh, Still a really good game. Old Dominion has a lot of things going for it with the update, and I'm liking where they're going. So let's go to round three. Here's round three. We're playing into 100 kingdoms versus 100 kingdoms. Uh, my opponent's running, I think there's like two units of Merc Crossbows, two units of Men at Arms of Chapter Mage, a big block of five of Ash and Dawn, two units of Crimson Tower. The big block of five has their prior commander in it. And that's about it, I believe. Um, here, you, uh, my opponent doesn't really like run up the table. Oh, they have a uh, Steel Legion with uh, the Imperial Officer, but he's not the Warlord. But so I'm just like running up the table to just threaten him, and he's like taking a couple shots. But it's like I'm really coming at him with all my Mountain Squires. Also, Knights are running up the table to start like contesting this, so he's not going to get in. And I'm looking to get into the zone with these Hustle Knights so they can just sit there and score for the rest of the game. And then I can push um, this. Let's go look at turn whatever the heck the next picture is. Here's the next picture. Oh, this is actually really good. Cool. So because my mountain squires are so goddamn far forward, I drop my sealed legion onto the side here, ready to charge his crimson towers. And as you can see, my hustle knights ran off and. They started killing men at arms. His Crimson Towers are coming to get my House of Knights, but now he's going to get flank charged by Sealed Temple. Um, House of Knights and Sealed Temple versus Crimson Towers. That's a win in my favor. Then I can, you know, get into the back here, wipe out these more crossbows, get into the side, kill these men at arms and Chapter Mage. He's using the Chapter Mage to, like, heal these Ash and Dawn. 
I don't really care, to be honest. <laughs> um, I was setting up uh, one of my outdoor squires, I believe, backed off. And I had them set up so that my opponent would have to charge them to the side to kill them. He charged them and killed them on the impacts. Um, or maybe he clashed them, I forget. I think he like got in there and killed them, but then reformed for the front. Not the end of the world. My Ash and Dawn are looking at this, like, you know, right in the side. That'll be really good for me. Um, he's running up his Crimson Towers here. I got another unit of Ash and Dawn that are coming in looking to, like, sweep this whole thing off to the side. Because if you get two units of Ash and Dawn... If you get your unit of Ash and Dawn stuck between two units of Ash and Dawn, you're in a really bad spot. And that's what I'm trying to go for. So this, this turn's a really big deciding turn of, like, who's going to get where, where's everyone going. Um... Things would work really well for me if I can get into the back end and wipe out this stuff and score this zone. That's going to be tons of points. I'm already holding onto this zone, so I need to not have uh, either get contested out. But I'm in a really strong spot. My opponent's kind of backed up into a corner, and I'm kind of coming for him. This is the last picture after everything's said and done. So uh, things that happen, Crimson Tower kind of hit my Helsinite Knights on the uh, left here. Uh, House of Knights and Crimson Tower die, Ashdon, uh, he moved his Sealed Temple up, he got stuck on himself a lot, and I eventually got in there and killed all the Sealed Temple, just through sheer volume attacks, just, even if without the cleave, I just like ripped through them all. Um, then I took over that zone, the Sealed Temple that are mine were fighting his Crimson Towers and killed them all. My House of Knights, uh, they die at some point, I think they got charged by Crimson Towers. My Sealed Temple over here just, you know, killed Merc Crossbows, killed Sealed Temple, um, his men at arms, not wanting to die with the chapter mage, just like booked it and charged into my back. But you could kind of like, you know, ooh, do I do I charge a seal temple off of the four point zone to the back of the men at arms and get six po six points, or do I just like sit here and wait? Um, because right now I'm scoring seven points a turn and he's still fighting that one unit of Ashendon. Those guys have been fighting for like five turns and I'm just like, yeah, whatever. Um, I don't care if I'm gonna win or lose, even if you're healing them. I already control the zones and have wiped out the majority of your list. I'm in a really good spot, scored a ton of points, won this round. And that's the end of day three. So day three going into day two, I'm two and one. Uh, pretty good. I've already gotten my personal goal done where I win two games, so I'm really happy. Uh, I'm not, you know, don't know what's going to happen day four, but, you know, so far I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, my first and second round, I was pretty nervous. Uh... It's round two, drank some of that beer, chilled out, it's pretty great. <laughs> the secret is beer. Uh, so yeah, like, this is my first major convention, and I just, I was just like, oh. Um, so far, all my opponents were really good to play into. Uh, judges, like Leandros and Rolo, really good. The tournament so far with the terrain was pretty good. I know Rolo wanted more terrain. One of the boxes for terrain didn't show up when they got there. Doing pretty good. All the nerves are out. Having having a great time. Uh, let's see here. Thursday, we went out to dinner for the Michigan gang. Took uh, Skillin and I out to dinner to... Oh, man. Um, a Brazilian Express. It's like an all-you-can-eat meat place. Um, <laughs> it's, it's called Express because that's what it felt like going through my body later that evening. Uh, this time, they take us out to... Ooh, what was it? This, like, sushi burger joint what was really good. Uh, I had, like, a Chicago burger. Like, I gotta obviously grab the thing what's named after the city I'm in. Um, that was really good. Enjoyed myself there. It, you know, it's actually really nice hanging out with everyone at the end of the day and, you know, talking about our games and how everything went and just shooting the shit. So, really fun. Um, so let's go into day two and round four. Here's round four. Uh, this is my first Madrun matchup in the tournament. I think the only mirror match I have is actually 100 Kingdoms, so <laughs> here we go. Uh, my opponent doesn't have to roll anything for reinforcements, gets everything, and um, over-respects my charge range. So he puts his Slingers 24.1 away from my Mountain Squires, and that's their maximum march charge they could do. I go, okay, um, I'll just wait for the rest of my stuff to show up if you're going to be that far back. 
Uh, looking at this table, the big things I was really looking for in his list, because he's running like two blooded, unit of cock with scion, uh, unit of slingers with a predator, hunting pack, unit of veteran chieftains, and a tauntor, is I'm really looking for where his tauntor, veterans, and cock go, and I want to deal with them like on my terms. So, blooded over here, uh, I'll just kill those, I don't really care. Slingers, I'll eventually get something in the back and kill it. Hunting Pack will get something in the back and kill it. Um, the Cock and the Veterans, I need to have a plan. I don't know where his Tauntor is yet, but I he also doesn't know where any of my Ash and Dawn or the rest of my horses are because I'm not really getting any very many good rolls. Here is after stuff comes on, so I have my Sealed Temple there. They run in and kill like his Blooded over here and then reform into the zone scorn it. Ash and Dawn come in, they charge into another unit of blooded, killing it, and then, you know, they charge into the slingers and predator, kill it, and they get on the zone. So my opponent was scoring this middle zone with his cock a lot, but he sees me coming for him now and that his entire, like, left side is collapsing and I'm moving into the middle, so it's not gonna be really good. He puts his cock into my Helsel Knights. I'm like, and okay, whatever, I'll just move Ash and Dawn over and just reform into you. Um, Seal Temple and Hellsel Knights, you know, or sorry, well, yeah, Hellsel Knights and Veterans are kind of just duking it out. I don't really care. Uh, Seal Temple are just kind of hanging out right here. They're not needed just yet because I'm wary of, is the Tauntor coming for me? Like, what, what's going on there? Who's scoring? What's he going to have here for the rest of the game scoring that zone? Because if he moves one of them off, uh, and they're not getting fight out of, I can set up the engagement to kill him. Because right now, I'm controlling two to his one scenario elements, and I want to pull him off that last one, and just kind of piecemeal take all his stuff. Mount Squire's like died over here, I don't really care. We got this one Mount Squire left over here who's like broken, and he's just like running around, not really doing anything. I think a Tauntor finally steps on him and kills him after a while. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, so far, I'm in a really commanding position at this point, and I kind of ride that out until the end of the game. Yeah, so here we go. Uh, Household Knights are both dead. At least purple, so Household Knights purple dead. Um, Household Knights purple dead. His cock and slingers are dead. Right there, they're dead. Um, I'm still scoring these two zones, doing really good. My Mountain Squire got stepped on by a Tauntor because I was basically just like baiting him. <laughs> um, these Sealed Temple over here are just like, oh, well, come and get me because if you want to come and get me, it pulls you off the zone and I got Ash and Dawn who will come and eat you. Like, what you want to do? And you're not, I'm not, you're not in the front arc. Like he's, he has to reform, it's really annoying, so he can either go into the side of the Ash and Dawn, but he's not getting impacts and no Inspire. Ah, uh, it's a real, it's a real mess. So, I'm just kind of hanging out, just being annoying <laughs> at this point. Um, the Sealed Temple on the right side basically just do, like, donuts in the parking lot while the store manager of a Blockbuster is looking out the window, being really annoyed and can't do anything. They do that for basically the entire game just being annoying just like bait trying to bait him off the zone because i need like i'm still waiting for other stuff uh so let's go to the next turn here we go so what happened here um his veterans come in and charge my ash and dawn my ash and dawn reform and fight his veterans they eventually kill each other and i kill off his veterans my sealed temple who were doing donuts outside of the blockbuster eventually charge into the back of the veterans and kill them off. And then I set up both my Ash and Dawn units to kind of start making their way towards the Tauntor. My opponent sets his Tauntor on the edge of the zone to keep me out. This unit of Ash and Dawn swings into the side. This unit in the front swings into the front. My unit of Sealed Temple just run off into the zone to score it. And on turn 10, I kill the Tauntor, score the zone, win the game, tabling my opponent. Really good game, um, I think my opponent really had to focus on two of the three scenario elements for sure. Uh, they spread themselves thin too much and I ate some blooded for free or like without a huge amount of reprisal. Um, he could have used the blooded maybe a bit better to defend his side where his slingers were. Um, and just maybe put that tauntar up the middle to support the, the cock better. But. Overall, really good game, and that is my third win.
Here is me into Brian, and Brian is the LVO winner. Brian's playing Dwight Home. Brian has two Magma Wizards on two Hell Hellbringer Drakes. He's got two Argents and two units of Flame Berserkers, and he's got two units of Fire... Was it Fireforge? Yeah, Fireforge with uh, one unit of Bliste. This game does not go very well for me. Um, so far at the start here, I'm looking to take this objective. That was kind of a bad move. I could have gone elsewhere. Um, Brian's playing very central, so it's hard to tell where he's going to put his other three regiments. I'm playing very wide, but he still has to be wary about where my Ash and Dawn are. I don't know really much to say about this, like, I'm s scoring the zone, it's not bad, he's not scoring anything else, I'm kind of getting up on points early on, but he's he's playing the longer game and he knows what to do. So Brian played Huckleberry Smash round 3. Huckleberry Smash plays a similar 100k list, and Brian fell for the traps of this list. He is not falling for the traps against me, and he knows exactly everything I'm going to do to him, but really sucks when playing to an opponent that knows everything and has learnt from a loss that he had during the same tournament you're playing him in. So it's very fresh in his mind, and he's very aware of what's about to happen. And with that, basically counters everything I do. This one, he's killed uh, my Mount Squires, still fighting for the objectives, I'm still setting up, nothing too crazy. Actually, I think that was the same turn. Uh, here we go, got both my Ash and Dawn on the table. Um, I should have been more aggressive with my Mounted Squires. I'm not. Um, and that would have helped out a lot, because I really need to get like get into these uh, Hellbringer Drakes right here. He basically has a 16-inch circle of death around him, and if you're within that, you're going to die. Uh, over on the right, I ran my Seal Temple up too far forward, and he basically does a side from reinforcement. I'll use the blue card. He, like, deploys from side and just, like, shoots into me and, like, kills them all. Uh, not the greatest. He's in a really good spot with those two units of Fire Forge. He can get one engaged. Their defense four, they'll survive, and the other unit can just, like, shoot into the side of the knights, dropping down to defense. Um, two or one, what really sucks. And it's not going to be going really great. Ash and Dawn into Flame Berserkers. I'm trying to chew through this. It's a lot of Flame Berserkers. Defense three, resolve five is really tough. Um... And I really need that other unit of Ash and Dawn to get in here, rip through that Flame Berserker, and like get into the nice juicy core. So if I can get Ash and Dawn into their core, I can start really working up. He's been generating a lot of shit tickets, but I've been burning through them all, but he does have four fucking wizards. So it's a really rough list to deal with. Here we go. Uh, fire, was it Fireforge? Still doing well. Killing off stuff. You know, I got a unit of Helsa Knights here, still weak. I got one... Also, Knight just being a dingus, like he has no place to go. Um, Ash and Dawn finding these flame berserkers are all dead. That really sucked. Um, the Hellbringer Drakes were just unloading pirate like their shots. The pyro class, everyone's just unloading because he needs to kill them. Um, finally got Ash and Dawn and Mount Squires into the side of these flame berserkers. But now that he has basically secured the middle, he's going to spin the rest of his armies into those Ash and Dawn. It's not going to be very fun at all. This is about the end of the game. Brian is scoring this zone. He's scoring this zone. Um, he's turned the rest of his forces onto my Ash and Dawn. He's just unloading into them, getting shots, doing whatever. And the game ends with um, this Fire Forge Regiment on like three stands, running into the zone, scoring it, and he scores all four. Uh, Brian and I talk, and we talk about force allocation, and he basically had about 500 points of 100 Kingdoms tied up with about 300 points or 400 points, eh, but maybe two to 300 points of Dweg on that left side was really good for him. I should just like gone full bulls walls at him, and I did not. I should have waited longer on the objective marker. I did not. Um... The scenario I could have picked up better at the end, I really just need to keep him out and just start killing his key pieces, what are his wizards, and I didn't do that. So he got the one that, like, uh, he got the win there. And it was a really good game overall, I learned a lot from this game, and I applied it to my next opponent. Okay, so this one I gotta play on tabletop sim, half-assed, because I forgot to take photos. My round 6 opponent is Peter, really good guy, he's playing 100 Kingdoms again, so I got the mirror match twice. And he's playing a list that is, um, 2 units of 4 Ash and Dawn, and a unit of 3 Ash and Dawn with 3 MSUs of Seal Temple. 
as well as a water mage and a unit of men at arms, the unit crossbows. Uh, this game kind of goes as following. You'll have to kind of bear with here as I just like throw stuff up. Learning from my previous game and force allocation and talking to Brian, I run both my mount squires on the same side of the board. Uh, this is roughly the board. We got, you know, like obscuring, hindering, or broken, hindering, one of the three there. And then two big impassable obstructions. So I run both my mount squires, like, up the table on this side. My opponent grabs his chapter mage unit, kind of blops them down in the middle here, and he's like, come at me, and I'm like, all right, well, I'm gonna keep doing that. I bring on my, those are gonna be your household knights. You guys, the guild legion will be sealed temple, and the household guard will be, actually, we'll make you, you guys, hold on. Whatever, we'll make guild, or, Elves of Guard will be Ash and Dawn, it's fine. So, we're like that so far. I bring up my um, Sealed Temple with character onto this side to kind of like lock down the zone uh, for turn two. Mount Squires just kind of run up and get in the way more, really looking to get into those more crossbows. My opponent brings on his Chapter Mage and Men at Arms, and he's running his a unit of Sealed Temple up here as well. And they're kind of just like holding on, being weird. Um, I get a unit of Hustle Knights into the zone, and I want to see the other Sealed Temple into the zone right there. My opponent then grabs his. Copy, paste. Yep, we need you. He then runs up being a Sealed Temple with the character into this zone. I bring on my Ash and Dawn of five up here to fight him. He counters. Ooh. I bring up some Ash and Dawn here. He's brought some Ash and Dawn here to cover that flank. And he brings on some more Sealed Temple. I'm like, ooh, this isn't very good. I've kind of moved back my Mounted Squires and they're looking to like run around this way because I'm in a really good spot. I bring up my Hustle Knights. No, I bring up my Ash and Dawn. Um, these Hustle Knights and their character go into the zone. I bring my Hustle Knights up the table more. These guys kind of get more. They go there. Um, lastly, the his Hustle Knights, I think, come on turn four. Or not his Hustle Knights, my apologies. His Ash and Dawn turn up on turn four. And then we kind of get all the fights. So, Sealed Temple, uh, run up. Ash and Dawn, fight Sealed Temple in the woods on the right. His Sealed Temple, get into my flank. My Sealed Temple, get into his butt. He uses his Supremacy a turn earlier than he really should have, what allows me to like bait it out because the things that I want to use his Supremacy on are things that have Cleave. The only things that have Cleave in his list are Ash and Dawn. So when my Ash and Dawn start finding his Ash and Dawn, I'm going to have an advantage because I am taking less uh, damage due to my higher defense. Um, my Mounted er, Hellsa Knights go into his Merc Crossbows. Ash and Dawn right up the table, he reforms and gets into like Hellsa Knights, kills off a stand, but he can't get in there because of just how everything is. They're bumping too much. Um, these Ash and Dawn killed my Merc Crossbows, they're dead. These guys get into the zone. So we're contested there. We're contested on the side. I'm scoring two zones, doing really well. Next turn, these Mount Squires touch the sealed temple these ash and dawn can't get the mount squires because the building's blocking them i know it looks legit but that's kind of how it went there um these sealed temple i just wait with my ash and dawn until the end after he's like activate these guys then i activate them and like kill off these sealed temple my sealed temple and his butt eventually kill off his sealed temple and i throw an ash and dawn attack in there just to get rid of them also knights kill merc crossbows eventually um, Ash and Dawn get into Hustle Knights, who are now attacked by Men at Arms and Chapter Mage. My Hustle, or sorry, not my Hustle Knights. My Ash and Dawn get into his Ash and Dawn. Ev everyone's fighting everybody. Um, so it's a real, it's a really big mess. I use my Supremacy. I get my Ash and Dawn to his Ash and Dawn. He's not on the zone. I am, so I'm really scoring that, and I'm fine dragging that one out. My Sealed Temple do a reform and get into the side of his Men-at-Arms. 
these hustle knights are basically sitting there. Um, this just grinds for a while. <laughs> Um, he eventually has his sealed temple reform away. I move my mountain squires off the zone in in front of him. Ashenon come in, don't kill him with impacts, kill him in the clash. My sealed temple reform and get to the very edge of the zone. At this point, I'm scoring all four zones, doing really good. His next turn. Um, these grind. These, I eventually kill this. I eventually reform and have these guys fight it out, and I eventually have these guys swing around in the back to get into these Ash and Dawn, as these two Ash and Dawn units are basically just grinding. Um, he runs his Ash and Dawn at me, I run my Sealed Temple away, I'm like, here, have the zone, I don't care anymore, he gets his Sealed Temple, who ran off, they're like, they only lost a stand, it's really not that much, onto the zone scoring it, his Ash and Dawn are chasing me. Game keeps grinding, this Ash and Dawn unit dies, Sealed Temple reform, this Ash and Dawn just kind of sits there in the zone. We're kind of getting to like the last two turns of the game. Hustle Knights, Sealed Temple, Ash and Dawn, all three of them into his Ash and Dawn. He kills my Hustle Knights. Um, I finally kill his Ash and Dawn. I'm scoring three zones. Um, I have these Sealed Temple in the corner, his Ash and Dawn have chased, he eventually gets in here and kills them. He's like... We're like chatting it out. He's like, give me them. I'm like, no. And as I like, keep like running into the corner, like I could have made some better moves to like keep running, but it was like, whatever. He's just give him the six points. It's fine. So we, we battle that out. Seal temple die. Um, and that's turn 10. So I'm controlling three out of the four zones. I have both my units of Ash and Dawn, a uh, unit of Mount, uh, yeah. Household Knights and unit of seal temple. My opponent has a seal temple and prior commander and a unit of Ash and Dawn. Um, I win with like a bajillion points, so go me. Um, did really well here. My opponent got stuck on a bunch of stuff, and I really just exploited what a hundred kingdoms can do, and I just and that's kind of what happened. Um, so what so what else happened here at the at the tournament? Um, so that's four and two. Did really well. I came in eighth. Well, it's actually really well considering I had no idea what to expect, and this is my first major tournament. I um. Had a blast. I had fun playing all my opponents. I had a great time into Brian, even though he tabled me. Had a great time into Peter. Um, round six here. Who else did I play that was really fun? Uh, my round two and one opponent, you guys were really good. Uh, the Wadroom player was really good. He just needed to not over respect, like, over respect threat ranges. Um, just because I can theoretically get to 24 doesn't mean I'm actually going to get to 24. It's just like, what? It's more important if I get a mark, uh, charge clash than it is a march charge on Mount Squires. So yeah. Overall, really good. Um, there was a prizing ceremony. Carl, if anyone who knows him, it's not surprising at all, but he got, oh, what is it? Another silver fish gnome. So now he has four. So now he needs to win eight more, and he finally has a full regiment of silver fish gnomes. What means Lee uh, Stravos has to put them in the game in a faction. It's mandatory. He has no say on it. Um, <laughs> uh, Chuck got number one. Uh, Nords player. A uh, really good Nords player. He's been playing war games since like t at least 2003, because I know he's an old war machine player. Um. So, congratulations to him. Huckleberry Smash uh, got third with 100 Kingdoms. Good job, man. Representing 100k. But really well done. At one point, it was either like round five or six. They're like, and Huckleberry Smash versus like this guy. And Huckleberry Smash like, Huckleberry Smash! And he like raises his arm in the air. And it's like, oh yeah, this is going to be a great game. So that was really fun. Um, there was lots of prizing for everyone. So, uh... I believe the top 10 and bottom 10 got to take something home. It was really nice. I picked up the uh, character cab guy from City States. I played horses all weekend. I'll take a horse character home. I got a hero base, what was kind of nice. It's just, you know, a fancy base that uh, the mini sits in the middle of the stand and not in one of those four squares. So that's kind of cool. I'll probably use that for something. Uh, what else? There is a production catalog. I think that's going to be talked about in the happy hour after this video comes out. So there's tons of more stuff going for Contrast, what I'm really excited for. Like Magma Forge, I'm really excited for. Updated Flame Berserkers. Uh, the Stone Forge looked really cool. I didn't see anything there for 100k, but 
uh, there should be stuff coming down the line. Like, 100k is almost done. It'll be filled out soon. Um, Sunday night, we went out to this big steak joint. Really good. Really great. I just want to thank the whole Michigan group for taking care of the Canadians, making sure, like, we're okay and in this foreign country we're in and making sure we're all fed and, you know, being friends with us. I really, I really enjoyed that and I really appreciate it. So thank you, uh, Michigan group. Um, Rolo did a great job TOing the whole event. Um, him and Leandros did like really good there. Uh, they went around, made sure people were playing the game right, getting, uh, coming over quick for whenever there was a judge call made. Like I know for sure I made a ton where it was like, Hey, this is kind of weird judge can we do this thing because it's just if there's anything weird going on, on the table like if i don't really want to waste my time being like oh maybe this or maybe that it's just kind of like let's just call a judge they can decide i'll just go with their um their say and it worked out really well rollo really knows the rules there were some like weird ones that were thrown at him i know that <laughs> um we had to deal with like reforms and stuff we made him like figure out a combat withdrawal from the side like how does the regiment back up it reforms to look away from its regiment and then it backs up it doesn't just like back up directly away if it's like reforming from uh combat withdrawing from the side what's really funny so yeah there's there's some weird ones but he did a really good job at that setting up the tables making sure there was um everything was there um and we were just like good to play once we got told where we were playing so good job on leandros and rollo for running the whole event really appreciate it uh, what else can I talk about? Uh, there was a round table Sunday morning, so we woke up for that. Uh, once again, my hotel was kind of garbage, and there were some people partying to 3 in the morning, and I had to get up and knock on their door and tell them to shut up, because like I'm trying to sleep here, guys. What the hell? Um, went to the round table. That lasted for like three hours. We talked about the tournament itself, how to run tournaments, how things that need to be adjusted, uh, one of the big ones, I, and Leandros called this out at the first one, was there was 88 Ash and Dawn minis out of the 11 100k players in the tournament. <laughs> so there was quite a bit of Ash and Dawn. So if you're, uh, if you're a person who's like, man, Ash and Dawn are OP, don't worry, it's getting looked at. Are they OP? Yeah, probably. Um, does that allow for things in 100k to get better? Actually, it does, because if you could bring the top end down, you can bring a bunch of other stuff up. But makes it so that not everyone's just playing Ash and Dawn. Like, I am for sure going to Dweg home after this. I have I have done two years of 100k. I'm really happy. I'm really fulfilled with 100k. I will gladly come back to 100k. Um, but right now, I do need a mix-up, because I've played so many games with Ash and Dawn that I really just need to pick a faction that doesn't even have them to get away from them. Um, so yeah, so a bunch of stuff was talked about about the game and everything. And you know, Leandros took a ton of notes. Uh, Stravos was there, making some suggestions. Like it was actually really good. Um, then we uh, took Stravos to the bar and we talked about lore. And Stravos was like, you know, explaining his world. It's really good. I'm really excited for his RPG books. Like I'm gonna buy them, even if I don't play the RPG. I want them for the lore itself because I'm really excited um, for the lore and having it all written down and what I've, you know, with talking about the lore with him. It's really exciting what he has going on. So I'm really excited about that. Um, and yeah, that was really the whole like Adepticon event. Um, after that, I think Skillin and I looked at it and we're like, wow, it's like three o'clock. We should just go home. So we hopped in the truck and drove to Minneapolis, uh, went through a snowstorm. Got to Minneapolis, um, a semi tried to push me off the road, but it was really fun. Uh, semi drivers, don't do that. Don't push people off the road when they're trying to pass you, especially in bad weather conditions. Um, uh, stayed in Minneapolis, woke up the next day, all the highways were clear, drove from Minneapolis to Winnipeg, got home fine. And it's been really good ever since. Um, I'm really excited to like continue playing Conquest and develop. Um, a lot of the guys I met there, like Kang, who's Matthew and Steve um, and Brian and Judge Worm and like all, all the mission grew. I'm really excited to like, you know, play online and get games in. I'm excited to play Carl some more and just, you know, also like pick up and learn Dweg home because 
after playing Brian, Dweg Home is not just like a straightforward faction. It's very easy to pilot, but there's a lot more going on that you could really push the level of your play. What I truly enjoy. Um, so yeah, I hope everyone enjoyed this. Thank you for listening. Um, if I sound like garbage, it's because I picked something up and brought it home and I got, got a little sick. I've been trying to record this for like the past couple days and this is probably the best I'm going to get before like next week and I'm just like eh whatever I want to get this done um Bonk Table has a discord description below Cassandra's got uh, a twitter you'll find that in the description below what else we got we got podcast I'm planning to bring on Carl and Steve and Kang who's Matthew and Brian talk about their experiences I wanted to get this one out so that I don't have to talk about mine so if you want to know mine here's the video but if you want to hear about those guys, they're available to you because I believe Carl got second, Steve got fifth, Matthew got seventh, and I believe Brian got ninth or eleventh, one of the two. So pretty good standings for all these players who are very good at the game. Um, so with that, thank you very much. Bye!